Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Fleming here. Before we get to our story, I just want to remind you that if you have any of our library books out, we sure would like to have them back. So um, if you don't know if you have any library books out, then you can either email me, and I'll put my email address on the screen, or you can ask your teacher, because they have a list, and they will let you know what books you have checked out. Um, you can bring your books back and drop them off at our next packet drop-off day. Now, how do you know if one of the books, or if a book, is one from our library? Well, remember, my library books have a spine label on them, and they also have a barcode in them, and they should have a stamp that says they belong to Sullivan Elementary School. All right, now, did you notice my shirt? Oh, it's the pigeon. So I thought we would end our school year with a couple of stories by our favorite, or one of our favorite authors, Mo Willems. Mo Willems is famous for writing books like The Pigeon, Knuffle Bunny, and Elephant and Piggy books, and Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs as retold by Mo Willems. Once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs, Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Oh boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud booming voice. It's finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. Yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unlocked home while we are, uh, someplace else. <coughs> then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. The three dinosaurs went someplace else, and were definitely not hiding in the woods, waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. Just then, the forest boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, Gotcha! But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, Be patient, Papa Dinosaur. The trap is not yet sprung. But that could have been a rock falling or a squirrel. Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. For example... Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. So, as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. Inside, Goldilocks immediately smelled the three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left there on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up that ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it all anyway because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? And the second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about temperature when you got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. And the third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right. But Goldilocks was on such a roll by now, she hardly noticed. Soon Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious, chocolate-filled little girl bonbons, which, by the way, are totally not the favorite thing in the whole wide world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room. 
So she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall. But that third chair was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chairs, so she hiked over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What is going on around here? groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. Just the room filled with a loud booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes and she'll be asleep. Delicious, chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are even yummier when they're rusted. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Hey! She told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran out the back door and got out of there. Just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling now or charge or the Norwegian expression for chewy bonbon time. Suddenly and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door, but they were too late. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. And the moral is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. And the moral for the dinosaurs is, lock the back door. Say... Did you see that that pigeon had snuck into Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs? I sure hope that pigeon doesn't do anything mischievous in my library. Oh, hello. I thought she never leave. Since Mrs. Fleming's gone, I thought I could be the librarian. First, I would check in all the books. Ooh, and I put my name on the door. Then I would check out all the books. Oh, oh, and the bookmarks, all of those wonderful bookmarks. And I could read to all of my friends. Vroom, vroom, vroomy, vroom, vroom, pigeon at the wheel. So what do you say? Let me be the librarian. Mrs. Fleming will never know. Please, I'll be careful. My cousin Robin is a librarian, you know true story. I'll be your best friend. How about I give you five bucks? No fair. I bet your mom would let me. What's the big deal? I have dreams, you know. It's just a library. Fine. Pigeon, what did you do? Okay. You clean up the books. You can be my library assistant. That's right, Pigeon. You can be the library assistant, but you can't touch the books. That Pigeon is so ornery. Say, can you make up your own Pigeon story? I would love to see any pigeon story or drawing that you make. Have your parents email it to me. Here is how to draw the pigeon to help you get started.
And don't forget to return your library books. Write meow. Be sure to check your own bookshelves and your backpack. They could be in there. Hope you have a great summer.